My name's Jonathan Hicks. We're doing bearings problems. Now bearings is a kind of angle and I've done another video, a bearings intro video, where I explain the concept of bearings and how you work them out in general. In this video I'm just going to work out a few problems. I'm going to show you the problem, you might want to pause the video and you can have a go yourself, and then I'll explain how you solve it. So first one, if we have two points here, we'll call that A and B over here. As I said in the intro videos, these are all like plan views. It's like you're looking at a map, you want to find the direction of one point from another one. And bearings questions can often get quite wordy. They might put it in some kind of context. So it might be at sea involving boats and lighthouses, or it might be on a, an island and there's a treasure map or something, and you're trying to find the treasure. However they put it though, somewhere in all of the words, well, they'll ask you for the bearing of one point from another point. And that's the key bit you need to focus in on. So in this question here, if they join up the two points with a line like that, imagine that's a straight line, they're going to put a north line on for you here and tell you that this angle is 55 degrees. And the question in this case is to find, amongst all the other words and things that they may ask you, what it boils down to is we want the bearing of B from A. So pause if you want to have a go at that. Here's the solution. The key thing to focus on here is where you're going from. Always start with that bit and it's usually the last bit that they give you. So in this case we're going from A and wherever you're going from you need a north line at that point. So if there isn't a north line at the point you're going from, which there isn't in this case, then draw one on. Just going straight up. North is always straight up on maps. And one important point to notice here is that the two north lines will be parallel. So you'll need your parallel angles facts for a lot of these bearings questions. So you can watch the angle facts video if you're not familiar with those. I go through all the parallel lines facts in that video. All right, so the bearing of B from A, imagine you're standing at A and you want the direction effectively of B. And bearings are always measured clockwise from north. So it's the angle from that point pointing north round to that direction until it's pointing towards B. So we're trying to find this angle here. That would be the bearing of B from A. Now in this case, we've got a nice pair of parallel lines and we've got the two angles inside. So we can use the interior angle fact. Now when I explained it in the angle facts video, I think I did it like a C shape. If you can make a C shape where those are the parallel lines, then the two angles inside are supplementary, which means that they'll add up to 180 degrees. Now in this case, it's sort of turned on its side. Instead of having the parallel lines there, we've got them upwards. So if you turn your head on your side, you can see the C shape there, which means that these two angles, the angles inside that C shape, will add up to 180 degrees. And that then allows us to work out what this is. So it's going to be 55, or rather it's going to be 180 minus the 55. So in this case, that's going to give us 125. So this angle here is going to be 125 degrees. And so the bearing of B, that's like the angle in the direction of B from A, from this point here, is 125 degrees. So that's a fairly simple problem to start with. Um, they can get a little bit harder, so let's try a couple more, make these a little bit more difficult. The main thing you've got to watch out with these, watch out for with these bearings questions is it must be measured clockwise from north. So just to illustrate that, if we change the points around a bit, if we say that that's now point A, we'll put point B over there, join them up with a straight line. And this time, in this question, they're going to draw you a north line here. Sometimes they'll put north lines on the question for you. Sometimes you have to fill them in yourself. And they're going to tell you that that angle there is 70 degrees, which is actually the bearing of B from A. The question, though, this time wants to find the bearing of A from B. So we're kind of going the other way around this time. You want to find the bearing of A 
from here? So that's the question. Pause if you want to have a go. And here's the solution. So focus in on where you're going from. You're going from B, so you must have a north line at B. We don't have a north line at B, so let's draw one in. That's the first step. It's going to be our north line. You always have to have a north line where you're going from. Now it's the bearing of A. That means we're going towards A, so that's the direction we're heading in from here. But it must be the angle measured clockwise from north. So it's not this angle here. That angle would be measured anti-clockwise. And uh, we don't want to do that. We need to go clockwise, so we've got to go the long way around. So from here, we're actually going to go all the way around to there. That's the angle we need. So let me just rub out that B and I'll mark the angle that we need on here. All the way around there to there. So they've told us that this is 70 degrees. We need to find something around here. Now in this case, again, we can use the C shape because you've got the two parallel north lines there. If that's 70, then this one plus that one must add up to 180 degrees. So that means that this angle inside here, which is not the one we want, but it will be useful for us, that one there needs to be 110. Because 110 plus 70 will give you the 180. Now we know what that one is, we can work out what this angle is because the angle's in a full circle, always going to add up to 360 degrees. So this one here, the one where we actually need, the bearing angle, is going to be 360 minus 110. So 360 minus 110 is going to be 250 degrees, and that means the bearing of A, so the angle in the direction of A, from B when you're starting here, remember it must go clockwise from north, is going to be 200 and 50 degrees. Okay, that's our second problem. We'll do one more. Sometimes they like to combine these problems with triangles. So we're going to ask a slightly different problem here. So I'll get rid of that one as well. So imagine they tell you, or they give you three points this time. So I'll have A over here, C is going to be down here, and B is going to be over here somewhere. Um, yeah, I just want to make this look vaguely plausible. Uh, the reason I want to get those in the right point is because what they're going to tell you in the question is that ABC, this triangle, if we join up the points, ABC, so ABC is an equilateral triangle. So this triangle here is an equilateral triangle. We'll come back to that in a minute. They also tell you that C is due south from A. All right, so those are the two sort of facts that they've given you in the question. Um, what they want you to find out, well, there's a few things they want you to find out. First of all, we want to find out the bearing of B from A. Secondly, we want to find out the bearing of A from B. And thirdly, we want the bearing of C from B. All right, so we've got three different bearings to find out here. On the face of it, they haven't given you any angles at all. They've just said that ABC is an equilateral triangle and C is due south from A. So that's the question. Pause if you want to have a go before I show you the solution. All right, and here's the solution. So, an equilateral triangle. What does that mean? Well, equal obviously means equal. Lateral means side. So it means <clears throat> all three sides are the same length. Now that's useful, but more useful is that in an equilateral triangle, all the angles have to be the same as well. And we know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if all these three angles are the same, and they all add up to 180 degrees, then you just have to divide 180 by 3, and that gives you the size of each of those angles. So 180 divided by 3 is going to give you 60. That means that this angle here is 60 degrees. So is this one. 
and so is this one. Now I'm not worrying too much about what the question is asking right now, I'm just using the information to fill in something on the diagram. You want to fill in as much information as you can and then you can worry about the questions. The second thing to bear in mind here is C is due south from A. So if we had a north line at A, if I extend that up, then the north line at C would lie exactly on top of that line there. So that just goes straight up and becomes our north point. And that's going to be quite important for later on. All right, so first question, we want the bearing of B from A. Now remember, you're going from A, so you need a north line at A, and we've just drawn one in, great, so we'll use that. So it's the angle clockwise from north. So in this case, it's this angle here that we're trying to find. Yeah, from north towards B, that's the direction of B, and it's clockwise from north. So that's the angle we need there. Now, because we worked out from the equilateral triangle thing that this is 60 degrees, that means this one plus this one, because they are sitting on a straight line, they must add up to 180. So 180 degrees minus the 60 means that that angle there must be 120 degrees. So that's our first one. Good. Fill that in as well. 120 degrees. All right, second one, we want the bearing of A from B. Now again, focus on where you're going from. We're from B, so you need a north line at B. I'll stick that in there. The bearing of A. So we're going towards A from B. So at B here, we want to go towards A, but it must be clockwise from north. So in this case, you're going all the way around the outside, past the line that points towards C, until you're pointing towards A. So you want that full angle right the way around there. So, uh, if I try and draw something on here, let me just rub this one out temporarily, because I want to show you exactly which angle we're trying to find here. We're going all the way around to there. So that's B inside there. And just remember that this one is 60 degrees. We'll come back to that in a second. So, in order to find this big angle here, what we could really do with is knowing this bit in here. It's all very well knowing that this is 60, but what's that? If we find out what that is, then the whole thing will be 360 degrees. And so if we take away that, then we'll get the angle that we're actually interested in, which is all of this bit. So 360 minus the missing bit is what we need. So if we can find out that missing bit there, that will let us find out the bearing. Now remember, north lines are always parallel. We've got a north line here and a north line here, so we can use our parallel lines facts. So if we're trying to find out this angle here, you might want to sort of turn your head on your side. Remember this one is due south, so this is a straight line that goes straight up and along the north line there. So that's parallel all the way down with this north line here. So with your head on its side, I can see like a Z shape, it goes up along the diagonal and back up again. And if you remember Z shapes, the angles that sit inside the crooks of the Z are equal. These are said to be alternate angles which means that this angle inside that crook and this angle here inside that one have to be the same. So this angle must be 60 degrees as well. That's great. So now the whole, the angle from here around to there is going to be 360, the whole circle, minus the 60 degrees for the missing bit, which means that the bearing of A from B is going to be 300 degrees. Yeah, 360 minus 60 gives you 300 degrees. So, that's the second one, and finally, we need the bearing of C from B. So again, we're going from B. North line at B, we've got one, that's great. So it's the angle to the direction of C going clockwise from north. So from here, we're going to go round until this time we're pointing towards C. That's the way we want to go. Not towards A this time, but towards C. Now this bit here, if you remember because it was an equilateral triangle, is 60 degrees, just that part there. So we just want this bit here. And again, if it's 360 for the whole thing, take away the 60, remember it was 300 round to there. So take away another 60 and you'll find the bit from there. So 300 minus this 60 is gonna give you 240, which means that will be the angle round towards C. And therefore the bearing of C, that's the direction of C, from B, 
clockwise from north, remember, is going to be 240 degrees. And that gets us our final bearing. So hopefully that's helped you get the hang of how to solve bearing problems. Remember, wherever you're going from, you must stick a north line there and you must do the angle clockwise. Don't just take the shortest route.